and today I'm going to explain to you the supply and demand in markets. Now what is a market? Well we live in markets that are all around us and every day we are involved in lots of different markets. If we buy power for our house we're involved in the electricity market. If we loan money from the bank we are involved in the market for loanable funds. And if we are in the photography market then we are either suppliers or customers of the photography market. Okay, so let's now look at this graph that's in front of us. It's uh, a nasty little graph you might think and you're probably thinking why am I looking at this because if you grasp this you will be able to go on in your studies in economics uh, a lot more smoothly and in business you will also have a good understanding of what sets the prices in any market because it's nice to think that you actually set the prices for what you want but you have to work in with the people that are demanding your services and together you will set the prices. How does this work? Okay let's first of all look at a demand curve. Now a demand curve, we'll call this a D1, will always slope down. Now let me explain why, okay? Alright, as the price of something increases, i.e. it moves up towards the sky on this side of the graph here, you will demand less of it. So our quantity decreases. As the price decreases, you are literally going to demand more of something. So if something's a lot cheaper, you're going to say, I want two of that instead of one. Pretty simple, huh? Okay, now let's look at it from a supplier's perspective. Now the supply curve will always slope upwards and we're going to call this S1. From a supplier's perspective, as the price increases, the supplier is willing to make more of it or supply more of something in the market because it's more lucrative for them to do so. It stands to reason. People want lots of pies, for example, so they are willing to pay more for them the supplier is willing to make more of them. But as the price decreases, the supplier is willing to make less of them only. He may move his resources into something else that makes more money. Another market altogether, like Danish pastries for sake. Anything like that. So there's our supply curve. Now this is all very well and dandy. It looks like an X on a graph. So what, you might think? Well, it's quite useful to look at this point here in the middle where they meet because this is the price equilibrium of this particular market as it stands at that particular time. We will call this Q1 and we'll call this P1. At this point in time, the market is supplying and demanding products and services at this price and at that quantity. Something will always come along in the economy that is going to upset this equilibrium. In recent years, we've seen new gadgets coming on the market satisfying consumers' needs for photography in the phones and in other digital devices. Literally, the market is demanding less of the services of a professional photographer. So how can we graph this? Well, it's literally a shift to the left. People are demanding less of a product or service. So we're going to call this D2. So what has happened to the price equilibrium? Well, as you can see, the point that they, that they meet is now here. And if we bring that across down here and across here, this particular market is now supplying less of something at a decreased price. So we're going to call that uh, Q2 and P2. But what about the supply curve? What could happen here? As new entrants to the industry come on board, people who are wanting to be photographers, they've been trained to be photographers, so they've joined the industry. The supply curve has shifted. And we've seen this in recent years. And we'll call this supply two. Our shift is now out, so what has happened to our price point now. Consumers are demanding less, the suppliers are supplying more. Well I think you can already see what's happening here is that the uh, 
more of the product and services being supplied because there's now more photographers in the market, but the price has now come down again. And we'll call this P3 and Q3. So the market is forever changing. This is moving every day, but the price points will always match the point where they meet. It's a mathematical certainty. Sometimes there are variations, but they're usually short-lived, and within a couple of days, if not weeks, the market has leveled itself to that point. Water finds its own level all the time in the bucket, no matter where you drill the hole in the side, and markets find their own level as far as price is concerned. It's the players in the market and how they react to each other that sets the price. So that's been my demonstration on supply and demand in markets. A little bit messy, I know, but I think you get the gist. Good luck with your studies and your business ventures.